everybody, this is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations. I have a design team project that I want to share with you. We're going to start off by showing you a walkthrough of the original project and then I'm going to go through the tutorial on how to make this. So this was requested by one of our crafty friends at Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. Dawn really wanted me to see if I could do a pumpkin shaped explosion box and so I did some magic and made one happen. So this is my kind of prototype box. I'm using doodle bug papers and these are a variety of different papers that are older. These are not the current ones um, that are coming out right now. Um, but I did buy them at uh, Country Craft Creations when I went to the last retreat. We had a pop-up store, doodle bug came, they had all the Halloween stuff and I bought like everything. So I kind of mixed and matched different um, you know, packages to create this box. Um, it is, again, a pumpkin shape, so we're going to make this beautiful octagon um, shape, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. I used some of the papers to create a stem and some little, you know, kind of curly cues there. Um, it is meant to stand up, so you can actually really appreciate the pumpkin shape. So I did it a little bit different than I do my regular explosion boxes. Um, I made the outsides with cardstock and covered them with pattern paper, but you'll see on the inside, we're gonna go pretty much strictly with pattern paper only. Um, that way the back of it, or the bottom of the box is not as heavy um, and doesn't wanna tip over. So it does stand up all on its own and um, it's, it's, I think, turned out really cute. So um, this completely measures, let's see, if you go from side to side here, it's about eight and three quarters top to bottom eight and three quarters and it's three inches deep and uh yeah so let's open it up now the fun thing is is that i did use magnets in it to help it help the lid stay where it needs to stay uh so that is one of the features i'll show you how to put that on but i did use three magnets two at the bottom and then one at the top here when you open it up and i'm going to start with the actual kind of um the explosion part and I'm gonna hope I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit so you can see it because I have to kind of dangle it off the table it is fairly big because the lids attached I'll show you that in a second it does explode out like this I'm gonna show you how to make the little gussets here I did not cover these with pattern paper because they are kind of on the small side I left them alone I did put pattern paper on the outer edges and you could put obviously photos and things like that all over this so it's really kind of cute um, here is the lid. Now on the lid here, I did put a photo frame here and I used some of the doodle bug cut aparts. Um, I did make it so that you could tuck a picture behind and um, put a photo mat there. And when you open this up, it explodes out like so. On the inside of the lid, I have another of the uh, photo frames that I made. And again, I did the cut apart so you could tuck a picture behind. And the lid, I'm gonna show you how I did it. It's kind of cool. Um, because it is patterned paper and I didn't want tabs showing, I did it a little bit creatively so it was, it was um, you know, flush on the inside and then had kind of a decorative piece on the outside. So I'll show you how I did that. It's super simple to do. Um, then it explodes out like this and all four sides of that box um, have a little pocket and on some of them I put photo frames here some of them I put some of the little cut aparts that they have in the paper collection I thought that was really cute and then um, I took and made some tags to go in the pockets because they are kind of on the narrow side um, I decided to fold them into a booklet so you could do journaling and put other you know you could put pictures inside and whatever I did use these cute little candy corn enamel dots are they not adorable or what I just love them so I did that so then the inside box I did put it a diagonal I thought that was kind of fun to do and again on this box I did a photo frame and a photo mat here and then when you open this up, again, another photo mat. And then this one opens up like so. And again, more little pockets, more little tag booklets, which are fun to create and just use scraps. And then on the inside, we have a very cute little squash book. So it opens up like so, and then it opens up down like this. So you have three photo opportunities here and you get to appreciate all these cute little ghosties that are inside. And then this one just tucks inside and this one tucks down and then it just ties shut with the ribbon that I got from the collection. Now let me show you 
the bottom of the box. So if you look at the sides here, I'm going to do it sideways here so you can see um, for a second. Um, this is the bottom of the box. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. So it is a little bit big. And then this part here, this is the inside of the lid. And what I ended up doing was taking a piece of pattern paper and creating like a belly band. And then in that belly band, I could put all these wonderful cut aparts that the paper collection has, which I thought was really fun because now it's an album and it's also a journal. So this could be actually a really cute way of doing, um, you know, like an October daily. Um, lots of places to put like little pictures and little journaling spaces and it's tall enough to accommodate these big tags that this particular paper collection has. So um, this is a fun project to do and I'm going to show you how to do that but it's really super cute. On the front I'll talk about this real quick. These are stickers. I bumped this one up on one layer of foam tape and then this one is bumped up on two layers of foam tape so it has a real nice dimension and then I use some stickers and some die cuts to kind of decorate that and then again it stands up so it's a decor decor piece excuse me um yeah and also a photo album so let us get on with the tutorial now, the first thing we're going to need to do is make some shapes. So we're going to talk about how to do that. We're going to start with the bottom of the box. So what I want to show you here is I did make some templates to kind of, um, you know, illustrate what these will look like. And um, you can do this if you want on your um, Cricut or your Silhouette if you want. But just um, be aware that your measurements may not be exactly um, as I'm giving them to you. So I'm going to show you how to cut these out by hand and then you can kind of go from there. So this pattern here is for the pattern paper, which is my abbreviation is PP, um, for the bottom of the box. And we're going to talk about this, but the pattern paper itself to cover the bottom of the box. So where all of the explosion boxes are measure eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And, um, we'll talk about that in a second. So then, um, the, the bottom of the box, the cardstock itself, you're gonna want a piece that's nine by nine and I'll show you how to do that. And then for the top of the box, you will need a piece of cardstock that's nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter and this will be the lid. So let's talk about the bottom of the box. So you do need a piece of cardstock that is nine by nine. And when I say on here at three inches, what we're going to do is we're gonna measure in from each corner and mark three inches. So measure in from all the corners, three inches, and so forth and so forth. So you should have three inch increments all around your box, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna combine those um, dots and you're gonna cut those off and that's going to create our shape. Now, if you noticed in, and I don't know if I said this or not, but if you look at my pumpkin shape, when I cut the pattern paper, this is going to be um, kind of a little confusing part. So I'm, I just want to make sure everybody knows. So when you cut out the pattern paper, I'm just going to show you with the lid. When you start by marking the three inches and three inches, you're going to have a short side and then you're going to have a longer side. That longer side is actually going to end up being at the top because I thought that that pumpkin shape looked a little more realistic than that pumpkin shape. Does that make sense? So I did kind of turn it. But when you do your pattern paper, you need to remember that um, when we cut them, you have to make sure the orientation is correct. We'll go through that. Um, but anyway, I just kind of wanted to explain that. I hope it makes sense. But I, I ended up, because of the base, I wanted the base to stand up, and I really liked this particular shape of the octagon better than that because the just the skinny top didn't look right to me. Um, but in order to cut it and make it easy to do, I wanted to the, the measurements to be super simple to follow. So that's why I did it this way. So um, you're going to take you're going to take your nine by nine paper. You're gonna mark it three from all the corners, which I've already done, and then we're gonna just cut them off. So I'm gonna grab my trimmer here, and I'm just gonna line up my pencil marks. And I'm just gonna cut those corners off, all four corners, okay? And you can use the edge, once you get one that's straight, you can kind of use that to help you line everything up. 
So you will end up with eight sides. Four of them will be three inches wide and four of them will be four and a quarter inches wide. And we're going to create sides to put on these, okay? So here is where we've cut off from three inches to three inches, we've cut those corners off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this box and now this is gonna be the top side, okay? I hope that makes sense to you. Um, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit, sorry about that, I should've warned you before I did it. Okay, so we are gonna turn it so that the taller side is on the top and the bottom and the sides, and then the smaller sides will be the corner diagonals, okay? So that's the first step. And then, um, like I said, I went ahead and created kind of a pattern. So next time I don't have to measure. So you could do that if you take notes and stuff like I do. And then you can just trace around if you want to. And then that'll save you a lot of time when you're designing another one. Okay. So then once you get that, then we need to look at the sides of your piece. Let me get this out of the way and put this to the side for a second. So for the sides of the bottom of your box, you're going to need four pieces that are three by three and a half and four pieces that are four and a quarter by three and a half. And on all of these, on the three and a half inch side, you're gonna score at one half inch. And I've already done all of that so I could show you. So you have three by three and a half and you're gonna score at a half inch on the three and a half, okay? And the way I did it is actually, and you, you know, you can do it either way, but I'll tell you a little hint and a tip, okay? If you are wanting to make sure, very, very, very make sure that all of your sides are three inches tall, put it in your, in your scoreboard with the three and a half at the top and score it three rather than three and a half because that will ensure that you have three inches from here to here. If this is off a little bit, it's not gonna matter because that's the tab that's going to adhere to your box, okay? If it's more comfortable for you to do it the other way, go ahead and do that. But I find that when I'm trying to make box lids and, and when I'm trying to make sides and stuff like that, if I actually do the tab on the end here and measure like they're three inches tall, so I wanna make sure that I um, have that three inches and that all of my sides are gonna be uniform, okay? So that's kind of one little thing that you can do, and that's one thing that I do. So then when you get that part done, we're gonna grab our scissors. You're going to want to miter your sides, okay? And then we're going to attach them to the box. And I probably could have done some of these because, you know, you guys don't wanna watch me miter, do you? But we're going to do that, and we're just gonna miter. And then I'm gonna show you how to put the um, in-between sections in how to create those. Because nobody is perfect and, you know, scoring and cutting and all that is imperfect, we're going to do all of the, the kind of triangular corners individually and have to cut them by hand. But I'm going to show you how I do that. And it's really easy. This is similar to the heart-shaped box that I created a while ago and how I created the sides for that. So if you've seen that video, you will have seen that. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is fold and burnish, and then we're just going to add these to all sides of our box. All right. Like so. So you should have eight sides. All right. So here is our box bottom, okay? And we have turned it so that our longer side is at the top, all right? And then um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna erase those pencil marks because that will drive me crazy. All right is I'm going to just glue these to the box. And I'm gonna put the glue on the inside tab here. And I preferred to just put it on the bottom because we're gonna cover the bottom 
of this box or the back of it with pattern papers. So I'm just gonna put it like so. Make sure I get it lined up and then glue that down. I'm gonna do this all the way around, okay? Using my art glitter glue from Country Craft Creations. And I'm just gonna go around and you do need to make sure you alternate your sides. So one side We'll measure four and a quarter, and here we go. No glue, wipey. There we go. Okay. Do that all the way around. So these are the three inch sides, and just center these. We're going to add corners, so if they're off a little bit as far as, you know, centering, it's okay, it's, by the time we get done with this, it's not going to be visible. Okay, so again, these um, pieces, the longer pieces are four and a quarter by three and a half. And the shorter pieces here are three by three and a half. And on the three and a half, you're going to score to make a half inch tab, okay? And hopefully this all makes sense. And if it doesn't, you know, um, ask me. I'm more than happy to help. I love helping. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know. But I'll also link the other video so you can kind of see that other video as well because I kind of did the same thing trying to figure out how to make sides for this box. And it is important to make explosion boxes, I think, with all of the sides connected at least on the outer box because it does make sure that it holds together and keeps its shape nicely and doesn't like collapse in itself. Um, I don't like it when it does that. <laughs> so I like to put corners to connect, you know, my outer boxes when I when I do my explosion boxes. And you guys know me, I love my explosion boxes. I think they're fun to create. This one was super fun. Dawn had this idea, asked me if I could figure it out. And yeah, like I said before, challenge accepted. And, uh, I've been working on it for a little bit, trying to get it just perfect in between everything else that is going on. All right, so last one goes here. Okay. Okay, so we have all of our sides now. So now the thing um, that we have to remember and um, this is important is that if you look at the box here, the bottom of the box, if we open it up, whoops, scrunched my box, is not connected to anything because I wanted it to open nice and flat and I wanted it to work properly. So I'm only going to make connectors around the other ones, not the very bottom of the box, okay? So, I'm going to use scraps for this and I'll show you, I kind of made like a little mock-up pattern. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a scrap of cardstock in between the sides of the boxes that we want to connect and we're going to trace and we're going to cut by hand. Okay. And when we trace, it's going to look like this. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to take a scrap from just cutting um, my papers We're we're going to use this as the bottom of the box. So um, I'm going to want to do all of the rest of these sides here. So I'm going to put this in between those two pieces, okay? And it doesn't even matter if you really, um, you know, have it super straight. You can put it a little bit past there. It doesn't matter. What we're going to do is take a pencil, okay? And we're going to draw around and trace that V between the two like so, okay? So when you take that out, you'll have a shape that looks like this. Then what you're gonna do is grab your scissors and here is where we're going to do some cutting. So I'm gonna turn it so I can see it. I'm gonna cut straight there and then I'm gonna connect those two points like so and then I'm gonna cut that off, okay? So you'll have 
we just cut those little side pieces and then you have these what you're going to do is you're going to go and cut a half you know half inch or so past those lines that's going to give you the tabs that will attach the pieces okay so far so good then you're going to miter the corner like that okay so you should have a piece that looks like this then what you're going to do is now remember this piece is going to go here okay so what we've done before i lay it down let's get that out of the way make sure you can see so what i've done okay i've cut that piece now and it's going to fit just like this now you have to remember that because we're not all perfect and we don't cut everything exactly perfect, you have to do this for every single one. You can't just make one pattern and then put it in and expect it to fit because it may not. It may be off just a little teeny tiny bit. So then grab your scoreboard and grab your blade or your blade, your um, scoring tool. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to score down those pencil lines, okay? Then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna put it flat up against the top and I'm gonna line that point up and I'm gonna score right down the middle of this, okay? What this is gonna do is give us our tabs to attach and then it's going to give us that inner side, okay? So I'm going to, whoops, make noise. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make noise. I'm going to burnish these, make sure they're nice. And they don't have to, like I said, they don't have to be like super perfect on the tabs because we're going to glue those down, right? So I'm going to grab my piece again. And then remembering that it's going to go to this right here, we're going to put this glued to the outside with the little peak in the middle okay so our mountain in the middle and we're going to glue those down and that's going to create our side so i'm going to do one at a time to show you and we're going to cover all this with pattern paper um, inside and out so these will be covered so you can either glue them on the inside or the outside it doesn't really matter i found it easier to glue it to the ends or you know to the outside so that i can really watch where my crease is because i want to make sure that these fold nice okay and then this should lay down just like that okay and if you you didn't miter quite enough you can always trim that off before you glue it down like so just make sure you don't get it into the edge into the crease there of the fold okay so now what we've done is when we fold our box up now we have our little corner that will help close our box okay so you're going to want to do that for every one. So let's do that one more time, and then I'll finish the rest of them off camera, and then we'll come back, and then I'll show you how. So again, you don't have to really worry as long as you just put that underneath your sides and you have a little bit of space on either side to create those tabs, okay? And we're just using scraps right now, okay, from cutting you know, bo the box pieces and all that. So I just had some scraps. You just have to make sure they're wide enough to have, you know, a little bit of space on either side to create those tabs to glue them. Okay, so I've traced. Now I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna turn it so I can do it properly. I'm gonna cut straight. Then I'm connecting the points. And then I'm gonna cut there. Okay, and again, we can trim that a little bit more later. And I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to trim down on either side of those pencil lines. Okay, and then we can miter here at the point, like so. And then we can miter these a little bit more as well, if you like. Okay, and get rid of those pieces. And this one should fit right here perfectly okay so then we're going to again grab our our scoreboard we're going to score down those pencil lines okay 
And that's why I have the red mark down my score line so that I can do stuff like this, have a visual when it's kind of off center like that. And then once you do that, we're gonna flip it over because I want my, my scores to go the proper way. We're gonna line the flat edge up at the top and we're gonna line that point down where my red mark is and we're gonna just score right the middle, okay? So then that will fold and burnish. Okay, and you can see, you can see that it is off just a little bit, okay? But, 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 when you put it in here, it's going to line up perfectly for the side of your box, okay? So that's why you need to do these individually. No one's ever gonna know that this one was slightly off when, it, when, it, when it's closed. They're not, gonna, they're not gonna see that, okay? So then I'm gonna do this. It wasn't off by that much, but you know, it was a little bit. I'm gonna put that point right there. I'm gonna line that up, the score line, not in the score line, just to the side. I'm gonna fold that up. I'm gonna put a little glue here. Okay. I'm gonna lay that down and it should lay down pretty darn perfectly. Like so. Okay, so now I have these two sides and when, like I said, when you fold your box up, it's going to help enclose everything and keep everything nice, okay? Then you can turn this over and then you can grab your eraser. You can erase down those creases, okay? And there you go, all right? So, like I said, I'm gonna finish the rest of them and then I will be back and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so for creating the pattern paper to go on the inside of the box, which we can do now, and it's probably easier before we do, you know, um, any other putting together right now, is to put the pattern paper on the um, inside bottom and the outside bottom. Now, there's a couple things that I did do. So, for the pattern paper, if you cut your paper at eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and then from each corner, you mark two inches in, two inches down, and then cut that diagonal off, just like we did for the octagon. That's gonna give you the pattern for your paper, okay? So again, the longer side, not the diagonal, but the longer top side, or side is gonna be at the top, bottom, and the sides, and the diagonals will be you know, at the diagonal. So you're gonna have, your box will stand up like this, so you just have to make sure that your pattern paper is correct. Um, so I made a pattern, so I could go ahead and just trace around and cut it out um, so that I don't have to worry about that um, ever again. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do it on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my paper, which I should have done before the tutorial, but I didn't. Okay, so there's my pattern paper. I'm gonna lay my paper, I can lay my paper down and I can trace it or I can just do the measuring and cutting. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm gonna measure two inches in Okay, two inches in on all four sides. Make sure I get this right. Two, and two, did that side. Two, two, one more time, oops. Let's do it that way. Okay, and then I can grab my cutter, match up those diagonals. And cut them. 
So this is going to be, this is the wrong side of the paper. This part I'm going to glue down, so I'm not going to have to worry about, you know, taking my pencil marks off or anything like that. Now, the next thing you need to do is, like, really make sure that you dry fit it and make sure that everything is correct. If you need to trim a little bit off of the side or something, do that, okay, before you glue it down. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to have my pumpkins at the top, and that's how that is going to glue down, and it looks pretty darn good, okay? Like so, okay? So, I'm just going to grab my glue, if you want to ink your papers, you totally can, I'm not going to. I'm just going to lay that down. That's going to be on the inside. That looks... Nudge it a little bit because Art Glitter Glue will let you do that. Alright, so there's the inside of my pumpkin box. So this is going to stand up just like that so I've got it proper. Now I'm going to go to the back side. Now, one thing you can do if you want and if it bothers you is to cut another box bottom piece and then lay it over the top so it completely covers the bottom of the box and all of the tabs and it goes side to side. You can do that and then put, you know, a piece of pattern paper on top of that. Now, the couple things that that will do, it will also, it will cover up all the tabs but it will also help reinforce the back of the box. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and cut another piece of pattern paper that's gonna be for the outside of my box, and I'm gonna cut another piece of cardstock and lay that over, and that will totally cover up all the tabs, reinforce the back, strengthen it, and then um, get that covered. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, and then I will be back. So one thing I wanted to show you is that if you make your templates and you keep them with your notes, then this makes this part a lot easier because all you have to do is cut your nine by nine paper and hold it or clip it and then just trim. And it will totally create your shape and you don't have to do any more measuring, which is nice. You could also use your, excuse me, your pencil and you can, you can mark it and then you can go ahead and trim it. Um, however is more comfortable for you but I just wanted to show you that making the templates if you're thinking you might make this ever again um, is going to be a lot easier so then I have my um, my cardstock here and then you can totally do that with your pattern paper as well let me grab the pattern paper that I'm going to use I have my template here, so again, you can either cut it at eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter and then whack off the corners, or you can do something like this and then trace it. So I'm gonna trace it on the back side here and I'm gonna line that up nice and straight. And then use my pencil. Now, if you want to be really brave, you could also just line whoop, line this up and use your straight edge too, but you have to make sure it's stuck down. Now, this is where <laughs> this would have been a great place to use repositional tape to lay your pattern down so that it won't wiggle while you trace. And I should have done that. That would have been the smart thing to do. All right, so then I'm just gonna cut and I'm gonna have to hold it a little bit so I can see the pencil line. It is a little bit hard to see on this paper, that's for sure. Trace it on the back side. So the part I'm going to glue down. I really 
need to clean my craft room. I got a mess going on in here. I've got so many things going on right now, which is good because I like to craft, but my room is a disaster area, okay? Isn't that pretty? So pretty, so pretty. I love this paper. I should tell you that I'm using Fall Breeze by Country Craft Creations. It's one of the exclusive papers and it's absolutely stunning paper. All right, so where did my piece go? So if you want to use a second piece of cardstock on the back of your project, okay, to cover up all those tabs on the bottom, you can, and then lay this right on top here, like so, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually glue on this first and then I'll put it on the box and then that part will be done and then we'll worry about some other things. All right. Okay. Now, I also, I you know, I mentioned that you could totally do this, you know, like do the shapes on your Cricut and all that, but the shapes, you know, the measurements could be a little bit different um, when you get done, depending on, you know, um, which octagon shape you pick or whatever. So just, if you're going to do that, if you're gonna decide to create this with a Cricut or Silhouette, just make sure you remeasure all the sides and accommodate the pattern, okay? Because it might be a little bit different. So I actually got on there and I was thinking about trying it and the measurements did come out a little bit different than what they are when I did it this method because of the way that, you know, it, it does the octagons and, you know, it's their own shape, right? We created this one, they have their own octagon shape which is just a little bit different okay so back of my box inside of my box this part's done okay let's put this to the side and let's talk about the sides for the lid so we're going to do this part first because we're going to need to set some magnets so for the lid sizes we're going to need two that are 11 and an eighth by two one that is four and three eighths by two and one that's four and a quarter by two these are all gonna be scored. And again, I put them in my scoreboard and then scored them at one and a half so that I made sure that the lid size is perfectly matched and that the tab size, cause it's gonna be glued down, doesn't really matter. Um, it's It could be a little bit off and that's okay. But I wanted the sides of my lid to be completely perfect. So all of those papers, like I said, are going to be scored at a half so one of these is the four and a quarter one's the four and an eighth okay and then you have these two pieces that are eleven and an eighth well let's talk about how to score those so I'm gonna grab my scoreboard now you'll notice that one has a tab over here and one has a tab over here okay so here's the simplest way to do this put them in your scoreboard first eleven and an eighth at the top Okay, and I want you to score them both at three and an eighth, at seven and a half, and at 10 and five eighths, okay? So ignore this half inch mark for right now, okay? At the top, ignore that. You're just gonna put the whole strip in there. 11 and eighth at the top, you're gonna score both of them at three and an eighth, seven and a half, five and an eighth, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of them with the half inch tab that we created at the top, score it at one and a half. You're gonna take the other one, but this time you're gonna put the half inch tab at the bottom, okay? And then you're going to score at one and a half, okay? Makes the lid sizes the same, but what it's going to do is give you tabs here. The four and three eighths inch piece is going to end up eventually adhering to here, okay? This bottom piece is what's going to help attach 
to this bottom hinge of the box. All right, so put that one off to the side. This one is the four and a quarter inch piece. Put that off to the side. We have the four and three eighths piece here. We have our little tabs here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna miter, okay? And then um, the easiest way to miter these is to fold them and then just cut that little triangle out, okay? Fold it here, cut that little triangle out, okay? So we have those mitered, okay? And then we're going to fold and burnish, okay? All of our little tabs, okay? And do that again, all right? So we can fold them first. It'd probably make it easier, huh? I feel like I'm being kind of, I don't know, a little discombobulated today. Okay, so we have one with the tab to the right, one with the tab to the left. I'm gonna cut those out. Okay, then we can fold and then we can just go ahead and do that little miter there and do that little miter there and make the tabs. This is gonna help us conform around the lid, okay, eventually. But first, what we gotta do is put these together and then add some magnets because it's gonna be a lot easier to do it this way. Trust me, because I didn't do this on the prototype and um, yeah, it would have been a heck of a lot easier to do it this way. <laughs> so take your four and three eighths inch piece. Okay, so this one's the four and three eighths. Make sure we're gonna glue the tabs down so that it contain it makes one continuous piece, okay? Inside, outside, doesn't really matter. So I just wanna make one continuous piece. And I just noticed that I did not miter that piece. So let's do that really quick. Had too much coffee today too. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is why you have to have the tabs on opposite sides. So we can put that right in the middle and that's gonna end up being the, the kind of top of the lid here. Okay. Okay, one long continuous piece. All right, so it will look like this is gonna be the top here, okay? It's going to, you know, have a piece glued here. We're gonna to get to that in just a minute, okay? So to make this box work really well, we have to add some magnets. We're going to add magnets to the outside bottom pieces here and the top piece here. But to, in order to make them match, I want to make sure, you know, to have them match up nicely. So what I'm going to do is the center piece that we added, I'm going to take my magnet and I'm going to put it right in the middle. Okay. Just right smack dab in the middle. And then you can grab your tape put a little tape over here, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're gonna do that on the ends as well, okay? So these are large basic gray magnets. I did get them from Country Craft Creations and I love them. This is going to help keep our box shape, keep it closed and help it, you know, stand up because it's gonna, you know, keep it closed and keep its shape. And it won't let the bottom of the box collapse in because remember we talked about that's why i have the corners but i don't have corners at the bottom of the box so this is this is kind of the solution to that part to make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to all right so right in the middle of that little three inch panel on either end i'm going to take that off this is going to be on the inside lid, so you can see the tabs are gonna go like so, okay? The lid will be, the lid pieces will be like that. Um, 
And then, so we have our pieces. So you can start from the top and what you're gonna do, and this is a little bit, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. It's gonna be a little bit fiddly. Um, if you want, grab some clips and you can clip your little corners together and that will help you keep the shape of your box so you can do this. Um, and trust me, I didn't do this this way um, on my prototype and I had one heck of a time getting the magnets where I wanted them. So I think this is going to work out much nicer. So we're going to just clip these so that we have our box shape, okay? And I love these clips too. These I got from the dollar store and they are amazing. Okay, so here's our box shape, bottom of the box. Our lid piece eventually is gonna go like this and of course now they're gonna stick to that. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take that tape off, okay, on that one magnet only. And I'm gonna try and get that, well, shoot. Now that's not going to work so good. Hold on. Let's do this. Get that out of the way. All right. <laughs> ah, that's funny right there. I'll tell you what. See, uh, this part is the, the kind of tricky part. Great. And it's stuck really good, too. And that's the other reason why I like these magnets, because they stick really good. So I'm just going to try to line that up with the score. There we go. That worked. Okay, so now if we hold this up, this is going to fold down the little bee on top. And now we have a magnet stuck to the side here where we want it. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of tape there. And then that will help hold everything shut. So then what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to just wrap this around and do this over here as well. And we're going to line up the sides here with the side here. Okay. I told you this was the hard part, <laughs> but I think it's necessary. So I'm going to just line that up, make sure that that folds down. Okay. That's where I want it. So we're gonna try and do this without sticking it where I don't want it stuck, right? Okay, so I'm gonna line this up. Maybe I'll do it like so. Yep. There we go. Oh, that worked out pretty perfect. Okay, so that worked out really good. So that's, that's stuck right there. Now let's do the other one and then we could take that off. Gosh, I hope this makes sense, you guys. <laughs> this was quite an engineering feat, I'll tell you what. All right, let's see. Let's do this. And let's line this up. Try and get it right, oh, nope. Move that down a little bit. It's okay, it's gonna be covered with pattern paper, right? Let's see, let's do it like this maybe. <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys. Don't you love this design process? Okay, there we go. Got it, okay. All right, uh, okay. So now it's, it's lined up, okay? That's what we want for the lid and that's going to help keep everything in place. So let's take that off. Let's put some tape here. Okay, we can take these clips off. All right. All right, so now is the good time to put your pattern papers on the insides and on the outside sides, and that's gonna cover all of your magnets, okay? So what I'm gonna do is do that, and then I will come back and we'll continue on with the lid. Lid is covered on the inside except for here. Um, I have the paper ready, but we do have to still add the strip to the lid and then connect it. So we're gonna wait on that for just a minute, okay? We're gonna put this off to the side. We're going to, let's see, I'm gonna show you the outside of the box is going to look like this. I think it's gonna be absolutely just gorgeous. We're gonna stick this off to the side and we're going to work on 
the actual lid part for a second. So um, again, the box lid, and I did make a template. So nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter, and then you're going to, this is the one that's gonna be a little bit um, fun to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I, yeah, I said that. <laughs> so you're going to want to measure in um, from the corners at three sixteenths of an inch, okay? So it is a little fiddly. If you have a three sixteenth inch ruler, that is um, awesome. But it's in between three and one eighth. Okay. So if you line up your paper so that the corner is right in between, hope you can you probably can't see that, but you see where there's, there's the zero here of my ruler. Okay. And then if you line your paper up, so the corner is right in between that three and an eighth and the three, that'll be three sixteenths. Okay. So I'm going to, you're going to do that for all four corners and cut those off. So if you see, if you line those up, I already put a pencil mark at the zero, which would be three and one sixteenths inch in. Okay. And you're going to do that on all four corners. So measure in three and one sixteenths, measure in three and one sixteenths and so on and so on. And then we're going to cut those corners off. So if you make a template, this is going to work out just perfect. Okay. So nine and a quarter, nine and a quarter cut your corners off. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my template. I'm just going to do that real quick. It should work out. Perfect. Means that your long sides will be four and three eighths. Okay. And your short sides will be three and one eighths. So that's going to all match up to the, um, The lid piece the you know this the sides of the lids okay so there you go okay you have that then oops I don't know why I had those out there um so then the next thing to do is um we're going to go ahead and we can attach our lid pieces now I found it easiest if I did it on the outside again so remembering that we're gonna do our inside pieces, we're just gonna wind that around and then create our lid, all right? If it's easier, since this is gonna be on the outside, we're gonna to have to cover it with pattern paper later, but we can cover the inside with pattern paper first if we want, um, whatever works for you. Um, one cool thing about making your templates is you only need to make three because the nine by nine bottom box cardstock is actually um, the same size you would need to cut your pattern paper for matting your lid pieces. Okay, so you can use the same bottom box cardstock nine by nine piece for not only the cardstock for the bottom of the box, but also for the pattern paper for the lid because the lid, you know, cardstock is cut a little bit bigger. So um, I have my, where is it? paper here um no wrong paper so for the inside of the bottom of the lid i'm going to use this and the one thing i have to remember is that when you put your lid on it's going to attach to the top of the box so you're going to want to start your um you're going to want to have your sides go around this way and then this is what's going to attach up to the top of the box so when you do the pattern paper, it's going to be like this, okay? And I do kind of want that truck in there. And I had a thought about that. Let's see if it's going to work. It might. I don't know. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Actually, yeah, no, never mind. We're not going to do that. <laughs> I've made it way too complicated as it is. So I'm just going to hold this, and I'm just going to cut the pattern paper I'm going to be bold. I know this tutorial is getting really long, and I'm really sorry about that. Okay, I'm just holding it, and I'm cutting around my pattern paper. Okay. 
again, if you want to trace and then do it, if you want to measure and do it, that's totally up to you. Totally fine. However you want to do it. But this is going to cover the bottom of the box. Okay. So you can use that same template. So let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be the ins or uh, this is going to cover the inside of the lid. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is do that. I loved the truck. I had the pumpkins on the other side on the other piece. So I want the truck here. All right. There we go. Okay, so then we're gonna attach the sides to the lid. So I'm just going to start from the center bottom, okay? And um, yeah, I'm gonna make sure, I wanna make sure, yep, that's gonna be, so when, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when you attach it, so remember the lid is going to fold up like this and this is gonna be the front of the box, okay? So this is going to end up being the top of the box. That's where we want that. So we're going to put glue here. And also, you know what else we should have done is probably covered this with pattern paper as well because it would be easier to do when it's flat, right? So we're gonna do that really quick too, okay? So let's just do this and then we're gonna go ahead and do that. But that's gonna wrap around like that. And then the bottom of the box will attach to this and then it'll fold up like that and that's gonna create our pumpkin box. So before I go any further and get crazy, I'm going to cover the insides of this piece and the outsides of this piece Okay, not this piece because we still have to attach all the tabs. And then um, I will be back, okay? Okay, when we left off, we're, we put our pattern paper on here. So definitely do do that before you put, you know, attach this completely to the lid. I did do the outside piece. I did not cover this because we will need to add the tabs and then we can cover that later. So then you're simply just going to go around and glue that down. Okay. So I'm just going to be very careful. I'm going to add some glue and then I'm just going to lay that down. I'm going to push that, you know, right to the crease and just lay that down and that's how we're going to um, finish this lid. Okay. Like so, and that piece will wrap around there. Let's do this other side and then we're going to recap and then I'm going to get the rest of it ready and I will come back. I haven't decided if this is going to be a two part video or if I'm going to try to put it all in one video. I feel like today I've had kind of a rough couple days for a couple different reasons and I don't think my brain is working properly. So I might, <laughs> I might wait and do the rest of it another time, like, you know, later today or maybe tomorrow, because I feel like I am just really discombobulated right now. So I may, I'm, I don't know. We'll see. I just really want this to make sense for you guys. Okay. Okay. All right, inside of the lid is done. That will fold up like that, and then here is the outside. So I, I did the same thing that I did with the bottom of the box. I covered another, or cut another piece of cardstock that fits the lid, and then I added the pa pattern paper to that. So that'll kind of reinforce that. Um, again, with the templates, 
um, the bottom of the box cardstock template is the same as the pattern paper template for the lid. So you just need to do that and then you have your um, template here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and already done that. And again, knowing that my orientation is going to be like this, this is going to be the top of the outside of the that lid to my pumpkin box. And I'm just going to add some glue here and put that down. And then basically, we just need to add the insides and then we can attach the lid. I'm going to attach the lid um, last because it gets big and it'll be a lot easier to do once we add all of the inside stuff. All right, so this should fit flush because I cut the cardstock the same. Okay guys, do over. I need to do something really quick. So I'm gonna peel that up really fast because what we should have done Remember that little piece that we had was going to attach? We actually need to add that underneath on the top, okay? It is gonna be a separate piece. So I'm just gonna add the glue here. Okay, and it's just gonna slide in here. Now it is a little bit shorter, and that is on purpose because it's gonna match the side of the pumpkin box, okay? So it's just a little bit skinnier, okay? So right there. So then I'll just add some more glue back here and glue that back down. So sorry about that. I'll put a disclaimer in here to make sure you guys don't do what I just did. So we should have added that little flap first and then put the outside pattern paper on, okay? All right. So we're not gonna cover that with anything yet, okay? So let's go through what we've done. So we have the box and eventually this is going to attach to this and that's how that will, um, you know, attach, okay? We've added all of our pattern paper outside and inside, okay? The magnets are on and when we close this up, the magnets will catch and help this stay upright when we set it up okay so again we haven't um, done this yet because we're going to put the insides in first so we do have the pattern paper that we're going to cover that flap with and then I will need to cut um, no I won't I'll be done because that'll attach just like that and that's already covered so that's done that's done so we just need to do the insides here and then um, put it together that's where we're at I'm gonna go get those pieces ready and um, yeah, I'll be back. Okie dokie. I have decided to try to power through this because I really wanna get this done and out there for you all so you can enjoy it and hopefully make it and let me know how things go. First layer is 11 and a half by 11 and a half and you score it two and three quarters on all four sides. The lid for the first layer is nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter and you're going to score at one and a half inches on all four sides okay so that's the first layer um the biggest box on the inside so then the second um box that you're going to create for the inside is nine and a half by nine and a half and again you're going to score the same at two and three quarters on all four sides so two and three quarters two and three quarters and so on okay um, then what you're going to do is the lid for that second layer is seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Again, you're going to score at one and a half on all four sides. Okay. Um, and again, this box, and I think I'm going to put this on the outside. So I'm going to rescore these really quick two and three quarters. Cause I want the little acorns kind of going in the right direction and yeah, of course, on this one, I don't know that it matters so much, but that's okay. I want this on the inside, okay? And then you're going to need pieces for, oh, to make the lid. So I'm going to explain this in a minute. Um, because of the way the lids are, I used these corners to help close them on the outside. But because of the pattern paper, and it doesn't, uh, it's kind of the same on both sides, I didn't think it would show very well. So I decided that I was going to make 
my own little pieces. So instead of using these one and a half inch squares, I'm just gonna cut those out and get rid of them. Um, but on the previous box, I used them. We're gonna pretend that these are the corners, okay? Um, I'm going to use the one and a half by one and a half squares from the corners, and I'm gonna just take those and I'm gonna score them at three quarters. So you will need four for each lid, okay? So you're gonna need two pieces of paper for the squash book that are five and a half by five and a half, and you're gonna take on the, the wrong side, okay, or the outside, I should say, um, and you're going to score at two and three quarters and turn and score it two and three quarters. Then you're gonna take it on the inside. I wanted the pattern paper to kind of explode as it opens up. So on the diagonal, um, let's see, and I was going to do this so that this was the top corner. So you're gonna do the diagonal from the right to the left. I'm gonna line that up in my scoreboard and I'm gonna score down the middle. Now you're gonna do that to both of these, but then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of them. So this one here, I'm gonna put in this corner right here, okay? So it opens up to the bottom and this one will open up to the top. Um, what you're gonna to wanna to do with this bottom one to make sure that it fits inside of this squash book is you're going to fold it and you're going to trim a 16th of an inch off of the cut edge there, off that folded edge. And then you're gonna open it up and you're gonna fold it the other direction and you're also going to cut a 16th of an inch off this direction, okay? Do that after you score so you don't have weird score marks to deal with, okay? Trust me on this one, okay? So cut your square, score it, decide where it's gonna open. Um, this one's gonna open down to the bottom, so you're gonna wanna make your diagonal this way. Put it in, do your diagonal, and then fold it in half, take a 16th of an inch off, fold it in half again, take a 16th of an inch off, and then that'll make it fit perfectly in this little squash book, okay? So there's that, That's all the pieces are ready. So let's take the first box. So the first box I made pockets on the boxes. So it just, you know, I did them kind of opposite of each other, meaning that, let me show you. Um, okay, so these, the inner boxes here, the pockets open to the left, the outer boxes open to the right. Okay, does that make sense? So the little pockets here are on the left side, opening to the right, and the pockets on the inside box are on the right, they open to the left. Okay, you can do that if you want, you don't have to, you can do them all the same. It's totally up to you. Um, in order, you know, just to do that, um, to make the outer pockets exactly the same way I did it, so they're going to open or be on the the left hand side, right? So I'm going to take from the inside here because I just visual that way, and um, I'm going to cut straight up that score mark like so. And then what that'll do is that pocket will fold up like so, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut up the next score line of hard to see on this paper. I'm just gonna cut straight up that score, okay? And then that pocket, again, will fold up like so, okay? Turn it again. Cut up that score. That pocket will fold up this way. Turn it again. So you're doing it basically pinwheel style, okay? like so. All right. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. They're all going the same direction all the way around. Okay. So then we can fold and burnish everything. Now, if you want to do this with cardstock and then um, cover it with pattern paper, you can. And again, the reason why I chose not to do it that way is because I thought that it might get too heavy and the box wouldn't stand up because it would be kind of too heavy on, you know, the top side. Okay, so here is the other thing. Grab your corner rounder 
All right. So I did this. So I, you're going to glue the pocket down and then have it kind of open on the top. So you're going to want to corner punch that top piece only. Okay. So make sure when you do this, because um, the first one that I did <laughs> totally messed it up and I ended up um, having the corner down here and that's not where I wanted it. I wanted it up where the tag was going to come in. It was going to make it easier. So this pocket here will be glued right here. So you're going to want to punch here. Okay. And again, just a little thin bead of glue right here. Glue that down and that'll just create your little tuck pocket. Okay. Punch. You're going to make the other box the same way you're just going to cut if you want to do it like I did cut the little pockets the other direction okay and then this one will go here so you basically corner around on the outside right I mean correct right <laughs> yeah I'm getting tongue-tied I need to quit I'm gonna get you guys all messed up okay so here is the inner box right here okay and that's done Okay, the lid is done, so we're gonna cut out all four corners. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors and just cut them completely out. All right. So. Now, on if you have a dra uh, paper that the inside, you know, um, opposite pattern is a little bit different, or a lot different, I should say, so it actually shows up, you can just use these squares. But because this one is pretty similar, and I kind of wanted the corners to stand out a little bit, I'm going to cut them all out, okay? And I'm not going to use those. Um, so fold and burnish your lid. And then grab your pieces here, so you'll need four per um, lid, okay? So we I already scored all of these, and again, they're just one and a half by one and a half inches. And then I ended up using my favorite little punch. This is an EK Success one from forever ago, and I wanted to kind of um, scallop the edges. So how I did that was I took a post-it note and on the sticky side here, I stuck the folded edge down and then I was able to stick it into my punch, line it up and then have a decorative edge to my piece, okay? So I did that on all four sides and you will do this to all of them. And you, and you don't even have to if you don't want to. You can leave them straight. You can just corner around them. Um, obviously, use a different punch, whatever you want. I'm just kind of trying to center that. Okay. That's how I did that. It's a really cool trick if you want to punch something that is small and you can't fit it in your punch. Use a post-it note. Because you can do it and then you can... Just peel it off and it's done, right? So we're gonna do that to all of these pieces. Okay. Then, I'll save that for the rest of them. Get all the little pieces out of the way. And then basically you're just gonna glue them to the outside corners. And then that's what's going to join the box. So it gives a pretty corner and it also gives a nice flush edge when you put it down. So um, the other thing that I did just to make sure that um, you know everything was nice and even is I glued only one side down at a time, made sure it went all the way to the top. I kind of folded it around and then um, double check to make sure that I didn't need to trim anything, like if I got it off just a little bit, okay? So like that and then open it up and then you can go ahead and 
glue that down. So I found it easier to do that on all four first and then um, glue them together. But it turned out really cute. A little bit different, right? That one looks like it's pretty flush too. <laughs> so that's good. All right. So I'm just gluing that down. Okay. We're going around all four sides. Now I did try to cut the scores out. Okay, so like that. And then one more time. Make sure. There we go. That one needs to be trimmed just a little bit. Okay. I can see it hanging off the sides there for just a little. Okay. Then you can go ahead and put glue on the inside here and we'll just attach them together. Okay. And so I'm just putting the papers close together and voila. And you have a nice edge there. And then it won't hang up on your box either, which is nice. Okay. I decorated the lids with photo, I made photo mats. Now that was pretty easy to do after the fact because, um, you know, the lids don't have much of a lip that's only an inch and a half deep. So it was kind of easy to do. Uh, you don't have to do that. Obviously you can, now the lids, um, you need to do flat embellishments on them because I didn't, I didn't give a lot of room in between um, the lid pieces. So just um, be aware of that. If you're going to do any decoration on them, it needs to be more on the flat side. So you could do, you know, a photo mat if you wanted to. That's not going to bulk it up too much. Um, but you don't want to do anything super fancy like flowers and things like that. You're only, you're not going to have any space in between the actual lids themselves. And then when the whole pumpkin box is shut, there's only about a quarter inch gusset. So you can't do too much. Okay. So there's my lid. Look how cute that is with the outside corners. I just, I think that's really, really cute. Then here's your, your box. Okay. And then that will just go like so and then there's your box and that's going to go inside the pumpkin okay now the same the the second box will do the same thing okay so um this is going to be the inside of the box so we did it so that we cut it up so that the pockets were on the left side this time we're going to do it um instead of cutting it up this side we're going to cut it up Oh, let's see. We're going to cut it up this side, okay, just to make sure we're on the same page, right? Let's make sure. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so this is going to be the box. We're going to cut up this side instead to make the pockets opposite. Um, totally up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, but now the pockets will be like right here, okay? So we'll do that. We'll just turn it, cut up. Okay. Turn and cut up. And then we'll do this one too. All right. Same thing with the um, corner rounder. We're going to corner round so that we have our little pockets and then that'll be the inside box, okay? So you'll have to score and punch and glue and do all the same things to here 
And then you're going to create the box lid and you're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with the other box lid with four other pieces, okay? I will do these off camera just because it is um, extremely similar. And then um, let's look at the squash book. And then I will, I'll show you how to put this together. I'll finish the other box and then we will come back and put it all together, okay? So we have our folds here. This is the one that we trimmed, okay? And then you're gonna flip it over. The diagonal goes in the opposite direction, okay? So when you fold it, and I'm going to do it like this, it's going to squash together like that, okay? So there's that one. That's gonna be the bottom right corner. This is the top kind of left corner. So again, this is going to fold. And the fun thing with this one, um, because this pattern paper here, I can put a cut apart on the outside and decorate it, which is gonna be really fun. I, the decorating part's gonna be really fun. So you fold the straights down, and then we're gonna, we're gonna fold the diagonal like so. Okay. And then this will squash to the top left and that is going to glue here and this is one of the reasons why we cut that extra 16th of an inch off because let me show you I want when I squish these together I want this to fit inside of here and when it's glued it's not going to hang out okay um, if you don't then it's going to hang out just a little bit okay so I'm going to make sure that I got the right orientation. I'm going to put a little glue here. Okay, and then I'm just going to lay that in there, and I'm just going to put it right in the middle there. We should barely have anything around the edges, okay? And just make sure you're not going to glue it shut, okay? So it should look like this. It'll fold like that, and then the top part will fold down and be right over top of it. So then on the back, if we take it, this is how it's going to open, so we're going to turn it completely over. We're going to find our score tape where I threw it over here. I'm going to put some score tape on the back, and then I'm going to find my seam binding that I've already cut, and put that right across and that's going to tie shut and keep everything shut when we're in the album okay so that'll go like this and i will of course trim this a little bit later and have it all ready to go all right like so okay so our squash book is done so i'll finish the inner box and the lid and then we'll come back and we'll put it all together Okay, so I have everything ready to kind of put in the box. So to put the first box in, what you're going to do is you're gonna center it at an inch and a quarter from the bottom. So if we kind of scooch all this over and make sure this is lined up, my inch and a quarter line is at the fold of this particular piece here down at the bottom, the flap at the bottom. And these are at about, centered at about these score lines here at three and three eighths, okay? So then I'm just going to put glue on the bottom of my first box layer. So this is the bigger box, all right? Okay. I'm gonna make sure it's in the orientation that I want it, and it is. And then I'm going to very carefully make sure that that's where I want it. And this box is six by six at the base, so I'm just gonna line it up at the three inch mark on the ruler here on either side of the zero. And then that will center this box, okay? all the way around, make sure nothing's squishing out. Okay, okay, all right. So that's gonna be our first layer box. 
All right, so then you can use your pencil, um, if I can find it, what I did with it. And we're gonna draw, we're gonna go in here and at the center mark on the scores, I'm gonna put like a little tick here at zero, okay, at the center. And over here, I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom, so it's just on the other side of this boot here. And our smaller box is going to go diagonally here. So if we fold these two down, and we line up this point and this point with that score, and that score, so you're, and you're gonna center, so it's gonna be up about a quarter of an inch or so from the score lines, okay? But the point will be pointing at those two little tick marks that we made. That will line that up. So again, glue on the bottom. And going to lay that down. Like so, okay. A little bit of eyeballing, a little bit of measuring, okay. So that'll open up like that, okay. Make sure there's no glue seeping around so it doesn't glue where we don't want it to, that's for sure, we don't like that. All right. Okay, so there's your box. So then this will fold up like this. I made the other lid that will fold like that. Then this lid here, okay, that'll close up. We'll grab our other lid. That will go like that. And then the rest of our box will fold around here. Now, the cu first couple times you do it, it'll be a little fussy, but the more you do it, the more you know easy it's going to be, okay? So we've got that part done, all right? So let's take the lids off again real quick, and then we need to put our squash book down, okay? So we made our squash book, and that is just going to center right in the middle of this, okay? So glue on the back of that. And I still need to, you know, um, cut the, the seam binding. This is seam binding again from Country Craft Creations. Everything is from Country Craft Creations. And I'm just going to place that right in between all those scores, okay? Center that, I'm eyeballing it. There might be about an eighth of an inch from the uh, scores of that inner box here, okay? And that's where that's going to sit and that's where that's going to be so then we're going to make tags for these so the tags for the smaller boxes i cut them at five and a half by four and a half and on the um no excuse me these are going to be three and a half by four and a half and on the four and a half i scored them at two and a quarter and then the larger tags here are going to be five and a half by four and a half and those will be scored at two and a quarter as well, okay? So that's going to be the tags that go in there. So you'll need four of the larger ones. And again, those are five and a half by four and a half. Score on the four and a half at two and a quarter. And then four smaller tags, which are gonna be, you know, the booklets. They're gonna be three and a half by four and a half. Score at four and a half at two and a quarter. And then those will just tuck in there, okay? Boom, done. So that part is done. Um, you can use your box lids to kind of keep things contained so that we can do the other piece. I think this is turning out gorgeous. I love this. Okay, so now we just need to attach the lid to the base. Okay, and that is going to be super simple. I'm going to not really miter that because um, I do want you know, a little bit more structure at the bottom. Okay, so it should go edge to edge, just like that. And then here is that piece of paper we'll cover that up with. So I'm going to put glue on this bottom piece. Okay, and then I'm going to, let's see. 
I'm going to lay that down. I'm looking at it from the side here just to make sure everything's nice and lined up. And I'll look at it here in a sec. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. And there go my lids. Let's put the lid on. Like that. Like that. Oh, for crying in the night. There we go. I can do this. I really can. I promise. I can do it. All right. So there's that. Here's my piece of paper to cover that up. It's going to be beautiful. No one's ever going to know. It's going to be nice and sturdy. And then we're going to close this up and make sure it works. <laughs> so you can see why this is kind of the last step. All right. Okay, there's that. All right. So, when you fold it up, again, it gets easier the more you do it because it has to kind of figure out where things are going to be. The magnets will help. There we go. Okay, like that. And then it should stand up and everything should be beautiful. So now all I have to do is decorate it and it will be good to go but there is the pumpkin shaped box and it'll open up like so um, you can have picture opportunities here you can have picture opportunities on the lid um, you can feel when you when you press on this that the the sides of the boxes are the same so you're not going to have a lot of room but you can do flat photo um, opportunities there and then here you can do whatever you want. I think because I like the truck so much, I'm going to do like a photo opportunity up here and leave this because I just really want to look at the truck. Um, so you do have about a quarter of an inch um, between the two levels here. So you could do a little teeny tiny bit of, um, um, you know, dimensional stuff but not a whole lot, okay? Um, and then again, it just folds up. The magnets will help keep everything in place. And again, it um, once you get the memory going a little bit, it is a lot easier to open and close, um, but the magnets will help keep it, um, you know, closed. I'm holding it by the lid here and it is totally stable because of the magnets here and up at the top bottom is nice and flat and that is that so you can decorate this any way you want um, for the stems let me tell you about that really quick so basically all I did and I'm going to use this as an example this cardstock here um, all I did was take a strip it was about an inch and a half and then I just rolled it so I took a dowel and you can do anything you want. And, you know, you could even get a real twig, which I may or may not do. <laughs> and just wind that around. Okay. And then, um, you know, just glue it into a circle. Now, this is artisan cardstock, and it's a little bit on the stiff side. But um, you get the gist. And so then I just um, took and glued that down and then that kind of became my my pumpkin stem and then I just literally just glued it to the top of the box um and I did glue it onto the lid piece here kind of towards the back a little bit um the little twirly things I used pattern paper for and let me grab a piece of that yeah, this might work it's a little skinnier than what I did use but um it'll it'll illustrate what I did so I took this is about an eighth of an inch I used about a quarter of an inch and I cut them about I don't know four or five inches um so let's just do that and it doesn't have to be super exact right so there's a couple of ways you can do it you can either you know curl it with 
like your bone folder and you can do you know one in one way and one in the other way and then just glue them down um, around the stem some of them I did under the stem and then I added some extra pieces the other thing that I did do was grab my quilling tool let me see where that ran off to and um, the other thing you can do is use a quilling tool and kind of twist things around. Whoops. I didn't do a very good job with that. Um, and if you lose your spot, you can just always go back in and do it again, but just twist it around into like a spiral. And then you can have a little, whoops, a little curly cue as well. Um, you can do flowers, you can do, you know, um, purchase little leaves, whatever you want to do the top with. So I haven't really decided what I was going to do with that, but that's what I did with this. So let me show you. So again, on this one that I did, that's all decorated up, um, the tags, I told you, you, um, cut them like these are the big ones, five and a half, four and a half score on the four and a half at two and a quarter. And that gives you a nice little tag to kind of pop into your pockets. Okay. Um, they fold up and you know like i said you can do photo mats on your lids um and they turn out really really cute and then uh here's the bottom inside i put an eek die cut there it turned out really cute and then when this folds up and again this one's easier because i've been playing with it a lot longer than that one and it's got a memory and it's easier. Decorate the front any way you want. And then here is that little roll of paper that I made the stem. And then I just added the green ones I added underneath the stem and then glued that down. And then these little spirals I kind of um, added uh, after the fact. And they just turned out really cute. So yeah, that's um, the tutorial. So I hope that it was okay. Um, I know that I was pretty tongue tied. Um, uh, like I said, I've had kind of a rough couple days and yeah, I guess, uh, maybe I should have waited a couple days before I did this, but you know, Hey, there it is. So if you have any questions, let me know. And, um, I'm glad you, uh, stuck through it with me. I hope you enjoy making it. And if you do let me know how it is and, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay crafty and I will see you again soon with other tutorials, please. Do check down below in the description because I will have lots of information. I will have cutting stuff. I will have all the things. And um, again, this was a doodle bug paper that I bought from Country Craft Creations, but it is a couple years old. But a new line is coming out. I just saw it today. Oh my God, it is so cute. And then this is Fall Breeze. And this is a exclusive from Country Craft Creations. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So I love that you can do a pumpkin theme in two different ways. You know, you have Halloween, you have fall, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.